In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the best way to defend the Trips tight end meta offense in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden players they can possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now, like I said in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about how to stop the Trips tight end meta offense. I think this is one of the best, if not the best, offense in the entire game because of the spacing, because of a lot of the principles that it uses to be able to just basically do a good job against a lot of different things. But we're going to share with you in this video how you can go about stopping this very powerful offensive scheme. The first step to doing this is your coaching adjustment. So here's the coaching adjustments that I would recommend. I'd recommend auto flip to be set to on, auto alignment set to default, ball in air defense to play ball, cornerback matchups are on balance, option defense is going to be on conservative, strip ball and tackling are going to be on balance, and then this is really the trick here. So we're going to put our flats on 30, our curl flats are going to be on 10 yards, and our hook curls are going to be on 5. So this is what we're going to rock with uh, starting now. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to use an excerpt out of our nickel 335 wide defensive guide if you have not got the 335 wide defensive guide i believe it's one of the best defenses if not the best defense in the entire game actually I just believe it's the best defense in the entire game it's really simple but it's at the same time very very effective and we're going to talk to you about a specific defense that you can use to really slow down the power of the trips tight end offense and so here's how we're going to do it so first things first is we're going to set our cover four show two as our default audible um, that we're going to go into out of the 335 wide. It's going to be the primary play that we're going to use um, to slow this to slow this offense down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sub in safeties at linebacker, um, the 335, and we're going to audible down into that cover four show too. So when we come out to the line of scrimmage here, what we're going to do is really important little adjustment. We're going to wiggle our user just like this, and this is really to help us um, take care of a lot of different things. It's, it's so that he doesn't move. If he moves, it's an automatic tell that you're in cover four show two, and then they can set up and run you know, different types of beaters and different types of things that are gonna put us in a bad position. Now what we wanna do is we really wanna capitalize on the power of this cover four show two, but first, before we go too far, I wanna talk specifically about quick base because it's definitely the best run from trips tight end. And so, uh, real quick, as far as uh, st defending this, what I like to do is I like to shift my defensive line to the right and crash my defensive line out just like this. And then I'm going to stand kind of right over uh, the tackle with my user. And at the snap of the ball, I'm going to run down into the right. And then I'm going to loop back in to get it. So uh, we'll just zone off this linebacker. And what you'll see is I'm going to do that right there. And I find that even though I will get picked up from time to time, this is the best way that I've found to stop it. Now, don't get me wrong, quick base is a good run. There's a lot of reasons. See how he moved right there? That's why we like to wiggle him because he's now he's all the way out here. It's just not a great, um, it's just really not a great look. So again, we're gonna we're gonna want to try to like really kind of hide behind this tackle because we don't want that guard to pick us up. We want the tackle to try to pick us up. So we're gonna kind of like jab at the tackle and then we're gonna loop back in. So jab the tackle, loop back in, and you see there we're able to contain, uh, we're able to contain the run a little bit better. Let me show you that one more time. Uh, so again, we're gonna wiggle him so he doesn't move, and then we're gonna shift this direction, kind of stand like right in this area right here. This is really optimal, probably like right here is where we wanna be. And you'll see we're just gonna run down, and then we're gonna kind of like throw there and there. Now, if you wanna stop this run in the backfield, like you wanna be able to shoot it, uh, completely clean. Um, the best way that I have found to shoot this run um, is actually to go ahead and shift my defensive line uh, to the left and then put my user over in this area right here. Um, this is another option that you can have, but you really want to be kind of over in this left pocket and you'll do something like this. Uh, whoops. You'll do something like something like that right there. The trick is to really understand the mechanics of the shoot quick base is one of the is probably next to like the cluster run it's one of the harder runs to to shoot so again you can do something like this right here but as you can see i mean it's just a hard run to shoot um another thing that i've had really good success i did want to talk about this just mention this briefly 
is if they're running a lot of quick base, I myself know this because I run this uh, this quick base because it's that good. But if you crash your defensive line to like the left here and you stand kind of like right here, you'll actually see that we'll have a we'll have a decent level of an ability to kind of like blow up the pulling guard. So that's another option. You can kind of um, you can kind of blow it up without actually blowing it up uh, with this run. It's just kind of how this run kind of works. If you stand like right here, you see now that guard is like, and that's where I talk about the importance of when you when you run down, you don't want to run so far down like so fast that the guard can like automatically know you're coming into the gap. You want to kind of like jab the right, and then you see. I mean, he's kind of psychic. Um, you, you, that's why I'm saying you want to kind of jab a little bit more to the right side of it so that you can stop it. But anyways, uh, one last one last way that you can stop it real quick is that you can shift to the right and you can use her to the right. This is this is another way that you can get it. Um, same kind of thing right here, and you'll see that I believe that you know again that one's probably the worst of them just because the pulling guard does does such a good job at like picking up the user. So you don't, what you don't want to have to do, and you can do this, but you really don't want to have to use her one of these two guys. That's really the idea. Um, so, you know, you can, that's why, honestly, for me, this shoot right here is probably the most consistent um, because your, your tackles will oftentimes shed anyway against this run. But anyways, that's, that's quick base. Um, there is, obviously, there's multiple ways that you can stop this. Um, again, you can just mess around with this a little bit. You'll figure it out. But basically, you want to kind of jab like there, and that's more of what we see. You see, kind of this like rumbling of the of the of the linemen will help a lot with this run um, if they're running it, you know, at a high clip rate. You see right there. If we go to the Mike Blitz three, the Mike Blitz because the Mike Blitz three has a little bit different type of run defense. Um, it's going to defend it a little bit differently. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go to Mike Blitz 3 right here and I set this defense up, you're going to see that I'm going to have a little bit easier of a time because the guard is not going to think of the user. Um, whereas in Cover 4 Show 2, if I do the same exact defense, I'm going to split my linebackers here. If I do the same exact defense, the guard, um, you see how he kind of loops back on me a little bit? That's what I'm kind of getting at. So anyways, uh, let's talk a little bit about coverage. So... The biggest thing from a covered perspective, and this is where I'd say, this is why I really like to shift this direction if at all possible, and try to almost like, kind of like, loop in a little bit and just contain the run. That's what I would rather do. But anyways, um, if we're talking about pass coverage from this, what we wanna do is we wanna divide the field up. And so basically what I like to do is I like to shade my coverage down, put my corner on the right in a cloud flat, and then I'm just going to seam flat both of my linebackers. So you see we've created a Mabel, uh, like a Mabel coverage concept. But what we're going to do is because we're going to be on this left side of the field, ideally we actually are going to three wreck this, uh, this defensive lineman here on the right. The reason why I like to do that is that's going to help with delay fades. It's going to help with routes to the running back quick. But what we have to remember is a, the – you know the powerful hitches and stuff of trips tied in we have to kind of think about that a little bit if they're running more hitches um, if they're if they're running more hitches then we would just do something like that okay um, if they're running more delay fade then we'll do something like that it kind of depends on what they're doing a little bit but this coverage right here will stop the majority of what they want to do from you know like a curl flat setup you'll see that these cloud flats and why I really like this is these cloud flats are going to force them because they're at 30 yards 25 yard cloud flats actually can get burned in this in this offense but because they're at 30 uh 30 yards it's a lot harder for them to get burned so uh, let me give you an example so if i go to this play set up here pa counter go and let's say i shrink the tight end and i put the ghost route out here the ghost route's really really effective for pulling zones you'll see that this 30 yard flat is not going to get burned 30 yard cloud flats are really the key to stopping this offense. Now, I wanna talk about one other thing that I really think is super underrated. So um, when we shift or when we, when we set up our defense and we set this cloud up on the short side, you don't actually always have to have a cloud flat to the field. The reason why is because there's not a ton of great routes in the trips tight end offense 
that is going to get, um, you know, kind of in this like area. Okay, if they are, you can easily use them. But I actually like this this setup right here. And another defense that you can use again, it does depend a lot on kind of like what their tendency is. But another defense that you could use if you wanted a little bit more underneath coverage is you could just put something like this, right? This is going to have really good middle of the field coverage. It's going to be really, really hard for them to be able to just have to throw over the middle of the field. The other thing I really like is because of where we're putting these yellows at 10 yards, you see that they're able to take away that Texas route that is really, really hard. Um, that's really, really hard to stop. So that's why that's kind of the way that I like to defend trips tight end is something like this right here. This right here is pretty much the prime defense. Now, what, what do you do? You might ask, like, what do you do whenever they motion someone to the right? So uh, a route combination that they could do to this would look something like this right here. So if they went to something like this, I just want to show you kind of how the route fares. Uh, and we're just going to, you know what, for sake of the video, though, it's probably going to actually look something more like this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if they do something like this right here, this is kind of a powerful setup. It's more of a four verticals uh, approach. But I just want you to watch kind of how this plays. And what you're going to notice is that this triangle receiver is going to be able to burn us over the top if we stay in that defense, if we stay in the defense. That's a key statement. So whenever they motion someone across the formation, um, you have to remember they still have the ability to be able to throw, um, you know, throw people open and all of that stuff. But what they what they give up is they give up a little bit of a, a threat to that left side so what we can do um, as a result is whenever they do this motion right here if they motion something like this what we'll do almost every single time they do this this is my automatic move um, i really like this move because it's going to help us with a lot of different types of things that they're going to be able to do Basically, what we're going to do is when they bring this motion across, we're going to cross man the tight end, and that's it. We're just going to simply cross man the tight end. What you'll see now is that that outside quarter zone will go to the deep fade, which I didn't have it on that play. Let me show you that one more time, and let me show it to you with like a deep fade. That outside quarter zone will do a really good job. So um, let's just do let's just do something like this, okay? So, and I, I know that, you know, I'm going to let him set. They're probably, honestly, because if they're trying to get outside, they're going to let him set as well. So, anyway, let's just go down to our defense. And so what we've had set up up to this point is basically this coverage, right? Well, whenever we see that in particular motion, we don't have to worry as much about a lot of things to the left side. We still have to worry about some stuff. Like, for example, a hitch to the circle receiver or something like that. So what we can do, we have, well, really we have two options. What we could do is we could man up the defensive lineman on the tight end, or we could man up the backside linebacker on the tight end. It's kind of up to you, and it comes back to that, are they running more hitches, or are they running more delay fade? If they're running more delay fade, then make sure you leave that three wreck and use that linebacker on the left. If they're running more hitches, then you just leave the vert hook, and now you're going to have a really balanced coverage. So I just want you to see how this works. So in theory, we've got, you know, three – We've got four verticals on the field, okay? And I just want you to watch how this is going to work. So uh, if I snap the ball, you're going to see that that quarter zone is going to go to the triangle receiver, and he's going to take that away. The reason he goes to the triangle receiver is because of the fact that um, is because of the fact that we've got the tight end manned up. Now I want you to really understand and, and hear me loud and clear and say, it's the most people if they try to do a coverage like this right here. What they don't realize is if they stay underneath with their user, um, this is actually a pretty easy bomb. Um, it might not be as easy in in um, in uh, mutt or in, in regs, but basically I'm just going to pass lead it up to the tight end. And, and again, I can't get it out there because Gronk's not fast enough, but in mutt, when everybody's 99 speed, so everybody's the same speed, and so you're able to typically get that out faster. Let me try to show that to you one more time. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm just fading, or I'm just simply streaking this and, and running like a crossing route in combination with a streak, and then I'll use like a wheel route or something. And what you'll see is if you snap this crossing route kind of right there, you're going to see this little glitch 
right up the seam. And, and again, I can't I can't get it there with, with Gronkowski, but that's what's going to happen. You've probably seen this before if you faced any type of uh, advanced uh, trip side in players. That tight end streak is what really can kill you. So in order to kind of guard against that, what we're going to do is we're going to cross man it. So whether it's – and this is a good cross man because of like tight end crossers and tight end posts and things like that. This is a good, solid cross man um, that you can use. So if you're more worried about the tight end, this is what I would do. And again, I just want to—I want you to watch. Um, I want you to watch this setup and kind of how it, how it does one more time. Um, so again, nickel three through five, we're just coming out in cover four. We've got our zone drop set to 30, 10, and 10. And then uh, let's grab four verticals just to show this to you. So let's say they do something like this right here, like a true four verticals concept. I want to first show you what this does uh, to Mike Blitz 3. And what's typically going to happen if they're running um, like a Mike Blitz 3 type of setup is the tight end or the circle receiver is going to get open. So if they do something like that snap, like right in there, and I just can't get him the ball, but in much, trust me, that's a, that's a clean read. It's, it's a... It's a tight read, but it's still a clean read. So we want to be able to protect against that. So the best way that I've found to do that is to just simply man the tight end up with the same cover. So we still have that cloud. We're able to keep the cloud flat, which I think the cloud flat is super important to be able to keep on the field. So then if they run that same com combination, now what you're going to notice is this triangle route, which oftentimes will kill um, cover two and things like that. But that inside quarter is smart enough that he knows, okay, I've got to go match on to him, and I've got to be able to go make a play. That's what's really cool about this defense. Let me show you one other situation, and I'm not sure if I have the right route for this, but I just want to show you uh, kind of one other situation. So if you did something like this right here, um, this is another thing that you could do. And again, I really like the idea of just manning the tight end up on this guy. We're going to have lurker on that defensive lineman in Mutt, so that's going to be a, a, clean, uh, a clean man up. But let's say they do something like this. Um, let's say they do something like this right here, where they're trying to get this little S post open. What you'll see is because we've got that tight end manned up, that outside quarter is going to go straight to it, and it's not a window. It's the same thing with the skinny post motioned over skinny post from Pat's YN or inside cross. This is going to really take that away. And so what's going to happen is the meta that you're going to be forcing them to do is you're going to be forcing them to either throw a hitch route or a quarter route to the left side, which is really where your user is going to be, right? Your user is going to kind of start um, over here on this on this right side, just jumping the flat or whatever, and then you're going to gradually move over into this side. So you're going to have a pretty solid all-in-all -all coverage. And then again, I just want to hit one last time on something like a something like this setup right here where if they're using this tight end post and again you're going to do this naturally because you're going to you're going to want to do this anyway because of the motion over so if they do remember if they motion um if they motion over then we're just going to take whoops uh we're just going to take and cross man onto the tight end so now if they run like a little tight end post you're gonna see he's kind of there. I mean, he did big the play for us, but he's kind of in the in the area and it's protecting us from everything. So it's gonna force him to do something like that, which is really you know forcing them to check down. They're gonna to have to play games with the user. So this is gonna stop a lot of the big stuff. It's gonna stop a lot of the crossing routes, a lot of the corner routes, a lot of flood concepts, and it's gonna force him to have to take the underneath. So thanks for watching this video. If you want to learn more about this defense and how to absolutely lock down your opponent on the defensive side of the ball. Be sure to pick up my nickel 335 wide defensive guide. It's been the best defense all season long, and it's continuing to remain the best defense in Madden 21. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up via text message. If you want to get that defensive guide, I've left a link down in the description, and you can get that for just 15 bucks.